Okay, so in this module, we would like to talk about horn clauses, specifically how modus ponens applies to propositional logic with only horn clauses and how we can show uh, completeness and soundness in that setting. Okay, so to do that, you have to define a few other things. Uh, so let me go back to my definitions here. So here we've been talking about inference rules. We've been talking about modus ponens, derivation and proving, and we've talked about soundness and completeness. You've seen that modus ponens is sound, but it is not complete. And as a way of fixing that, we thought maybe we should restrict our formulas to formulas that are only that only have horn clauses. So we need to define what a horn clause is. And to define, define what a horn clause is, we have to define what a definite clause is. So I'm going to define definite clause. And I'm going to define goal clause. And a horn clause is basically a clause that is either a definite clause or a goal clause. I'll define this in a setting in, in a second. Okay, so, so that's just back here. So what is a definite clause? A definite clause is a clause that has the following form. So you have P1 and it through PK implying Q. Okay, so that is a definite clause. Okay, so where P1 through PK and Q are propositional symbols. Notice that just one thing to, I want to mention is K could be zero too. So you could have almost like true implies Q. So you would end up with just Q. So, so that is also a definite clause. So here are some examples of definite causes. So rain and snow implying traffic is a definite cause because it does have this form of P1 and it through PK implying Q. Okay. Traffic itself is also just a definite clause. So Q itself is just a definite clause. Not traffic, negation of traffic is not a definite clause because you don't have any negations here, right? Like these are propositional symbols. And then rain and snow implying traffic or peaceful is not, is not a definite clause because we have this or here, okay? So again, a definite clause has this form of just positive information implying something positive, okay? So, so it has kind of, kind of that form. And in addition to definite clause, we also have this other thing uh, that is called a goal clause. So a goal clause is, is a clause of this form, P1 and it through PK implying false, okay? So, so this clause is called a goal, goal clause, okay? So like traffic and accident implying false is going to be a goal clause. So what is a horn clause? A horn clause is a clause that is either a definite clause or a goal clause. And then the reason I'm separating this goal clause here is this type of goal clauses have a, have a specific form. They're equivalent to basically saying negation of whatever comes first, right? Because implication is negation of this or false, or false goes away, right? So, so, so then it's basically just negation of this first part. What is negation of this first part? Then that is negation of traffic and accident or negation of traffic or negation of accident. So basically you can think of a bunch of ors of a bunch of negations and then that acts as a goal clause. And, and that is also allowed here when we talk about horn clauses in general, okay? All right, so that's a horn clause. And then I'm going to expand this idea of modus ponens. We talked about modus ponens being of the form of P and P implying Q being able to give us Q, right? So, so the more general modus ponens uh, form, inference rule of modus ponens is of this form of having P1 through PK and then P1 through PK and it together implying Q giving us Q. Here is an example. So let's say it is wet and it's a weekday. And if it is wet and it is a weekday, there is traffic. Okay, so, so, so this is going to imply traffic here for us. Okay, so, so that's just a more general form of modus ponens. Okay. All right, so then we have basically this theorem and, and, the, and the theorem says that if I apply this modus ponens rule only on horn clauses, then I'm going to get completeness. Okay, so, so modus ponens is complete with respect to horn clauses. And what that means is that suppose that you have a knowledge base that only has horn clauses, and then P is entailed, P is a symbol and P is entailed in, in, in this knowledge base. Then if I just apply modus ponens, if I just apply this particular inference rule of modus ponens, I will be able to derive P. And, and that's pretty nice because in general, if you ask me, like remember the ask and tell operators, if you ask me, is P true? You're really asking me if P is entailed in KB. And instead of me doing something of the form of model checking and satisfi satisfiability and things of those form that, that we have talked about, instead of me doing like all of that and trying to figure out if this model really like entails P or not, 
then I, what I can do is I can basically do symbol manipulation. I can basically just apply mode exponents on my knowledge base and see if I can derive it like syntactically or not. And then if I can, then, then, then this derivation and entailment are equivalent, right? Like if I can derive this based on syntax and based on mode exponents, then I would be able to say that the knowledge base also entails P. So going back to this diagram that we had before, right? So, so we will have soundness and completeness, meaning that um, this idea of derivation, knowledge base, knowledge base deriving G is going to be equivalent to knowledge base entailing G. So if you ask me, is G true? Or like, if you want to add G to the knowledge base, remember the ask and tell operations, that's about asking for entailment, right? And if it is asking for entailment, again, yeah, right? If, if, if I'm in a space where I have soundness and completeness of my inference rules, mode exponents in this case, then I can just do this derivation, which, which is much simpler. All right. So let's just look at an example here. So let's say that my knowledge base are the following uh, formulas here. And then my mode exponents rule is this more general rule of P1 through PK and, and P1 through PK added together implying Q and that gives me Q. Okay, so, so what happens here? So, so if, if you ask me based on your knowledge base, is there traffic? Can you tell me if there is traffic or not? What I can do is I can check if the knowledge base derives traffic. And how do I do that? Well, I have rain and rain implies wet. If I apply mode exponents on my knowledge base, I get wet. I know that it's a weekday that's in my knowledge base. I have got this wet and added that to my knowledge base. I also have wet and weekday implies traffic in my knowledge base. With all these three together, I can infer, I can infer traffic. I can derive traffic. And because knowledge base derives traffic and we have soundness and completeness, because we are looking at only horn clauses, we are able to say the knowledge base here in this case entails traffic. All right. So this is kind of like an overview of what we have talked about so far. We've talked about formulas that's in the syntax land. They have meanings in the semantic land. We have models for each of them. And then in the semantic land, if you want to check, if you want to check something is entailed or not, we have to do satisfiability, right? We have to, we have to do model checking. And that was quite involved. So instead of doing that, if we have a set of inference rules that are going to be sound and complete, either because maybe our formulas are restricted or maybe our inference rules are fancier, then we are able to derive a formula. And, and that derivation, if you have soundness and completeness, that derivation is the same thing as checking entailment. So in this module, we've talked about form clauses and, and kind of like a restricted version of formulas where, where we can apply mode exponents. In the next module, we'll be talking about resolution. So a fancier inference rule as opposed to changing our formulas in order to get both soundness and completeness.